You're watching The Voice of the Youth, a new show by me, your host, Kenem O, where I interview members of the public, members of the political class, youth, entrepreneurs, and older people from older generations to really understand Nigeria's political system, to understand how we as members of the youth of this country can get involved to make a better Nigeria. So that's the goal here. So I'm not sure if you guys have checked out The Youth, The Road to 2023. It was a documentary series that I made back in 2020 around the NSARS protests. And definitely go check that out. It's on YouTube and, and, and on Instagram. Um, and I, th I wanted to make a sequel to that. I wanted to continue the conversation and what better way than to sit down with some of Nigeria's best politicians, bright minds, and members of the youth so we can really dissect and understand how we can get involved and how we can create and change Nigeria and make a better Nigeria. So that's the goal of this show. Stay tuned every Tuesdays and Thursdays here on Stream OVG. You know, you, you can check us out on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, link down below, but it's at stream OVG or there are different variations on different platforms. So make sure you go check that out and let us get involved. So guys, stay tuned, more to come. Today we have Mokhtar Shagaya, APC's candidate for House of Representatives, Kwara State. Let's see what he has to say about Nigeria's political system and how we as youth can get involved and make a better Nigeria. How important is it, do you feel, for us to have uh, youth, more youth people in, you know, House of, Represent House of Reps and, and just in government in general? You see, uh, for me, I think uh, we the youth are, are the strength of society. We the youth are the face of our nation's future and uh, politics affects everything around us, affects how we uh, interact with one another, uh, when we vote, when we retire, how our pensions are, what we wear. So I think uh, politics is, is central to it all. And uh, being involved in the process at any, at any level, be it the national level, the state level, or the local level, I think uh, participation of youth in these processes are extremely important. So why did you decide that you wanted to, you know, run as a House of Reps member? Why did I decide? Yeah. Sorry, I, you, you were breaking up there. I said, yeah, why did you decide to run as a House of Reps member? Um, essentially, I've been uh, in the development field since, uh, since completing my uh, higher education. And uh, I've had firsthand experience uh, in rural communities and hard to reach communities uh, throughout Nigeria. I mean, I've been privileged enough to travel to at least 12, 27 states in Nigeria and uh, speaking to people in communities that even indigents don't know exist. Right, so uh, I think that really exacerbated the, uh, the drive to want to uh, contribute my own quota towards the development of my people, having seen uh, the myriad of challenges that, uh, that communities face across Nigeria. So tell me about some of the challenges in Kwara State specifically. Well, <clears throat> in Kwara State, I mean, the state is big, right? And uh, I'm only focused on uh, two, two local governments. So, uh, I mean, although I have some knowledge of what's going on in other parts of the state, I think my focus has solely and mainly been uh, that of Ilorin West and uh, ASA. So uh, access roads for agriculture, Sorry, sorry, hold on. I think I'm having an issue. I think I'm having an issue. Okay, yeah, I can hear you now. You said, so can you just say that again? Repeat that. So I was asking I said you about access the roads. State. Okay. Access roads in, in ASA, um, local government, are 
extremely crucial because we what we have there are a lot of farmers uh, who are unable to effectively get their produce from the rural side to uh, to uh, market. So uh, essentially, I think that is uh, that is a, of great importance and would uh, would really go a long way to uh, bolster agricultural productivity. Uh, electricity, especially in Asa, I think is a big deal. Uh, that is the more rural community. Um, so across those two constituencies, I think electricity is a big deal and uh, whatever we can facilitate in terms of bringing uh, electricity to uh, inhabitants of Asa would be, uh, would be, would be crucial. Then uh, unemployment of youth. I think youth unemployment is a global phenomenon uh, and uh, Kwara State is no exception. Uh, micro lending for small business. Uh, a lot of youth, uh, a lot of uh, people in business, especially small businesses, uh, uh, need support, right? In order to be able to make ends meet and uh, balance the books. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if we take a leaf out of the Executive Governor of Kwara State, Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak, what he's been doing is uh, setting the tone, right? And uh, what we're trying to do is contribute our quota towards seeing that uh, actualized. Um, yeah, so those will be some of the challenges I see in Kwara State. So I guess I would ask you, what sort of policies do you hope to put in place um, to ch make change, to fix these issues? Okay, so... Um, Essentially, what we're trying to do would be to create a platform for sustainable development, right? That is reflective of the interests of stakeholders that fall within Ilorin West and Asa federal constituency. Um, in terms of policies, I think uh, what I can say at this stage is that I would work towards uh, facilitating bills and motions that will be in the best interest of inhabitants of Ilorin West and Asa federal constituency, as well as Nigeria in general. Okay, that makes sense. And I guess when we talk about Nigeria as a, as a whole, and we look at some, you know, basically this platform is for to give a voice to the youth, it's actually called the voice of the youth. What do you right. see as you know some challenges in here in, Niger in Nigeria in general uh, that need to be faced um, when it comes to you know creating progressive change across the nation? Um, so, not to sound cliche, but definitely, I think one of the things we need in Nigeria is good leadership that is experienced, that has a track record of facing problems, solving those, right? And uh, leaders that have been able to build trust in different parts of the country over time. I think this so is really one thing, important. One thing people always say is good leadership. That's, that's something that people always, that's, that's always the first answer, right? And yes. a lot of people think it's not just a top-down type of situation. It's, it's bottom-up also, right? So mm, as someone... Absolutely. So as someone that is, you know, House of Reps, not, not necessarily at the top, but still somehow representing the bottom and having access to the top, what role do you feel that you have for Nigeria as a whole, you know, as a member of House of Reps, whether it's, you know, not participating in corruption or, you know, and making that as an example to other House of Rep members, what do you think internally needs to be done you know, from your, from your standpoint? I think it's um, of great importance to work with individuals with a similar mindset, right? Uh, I think what is important at this stage is uh, drawing a larger cohesive vision, right? That, uh, that factors in every tribe, every religion and every language. Uh, I think having this bigger goal and this bigger vision is, uh, is extremely crucial as it will outlive 10 years, right? And people will be able to realize that like, look, what is more important is Nigeria first right. before everything else, right? Like, uh, 
And having this logic cohesive vision uh, would require commitment, right? So uh, I'm willing and ready to work with Nigerians or parliamentarians or anyone for that matter, who is interested in drawing a larger cohesive vision for the sustainability, right, of Nigeria. Then there is consistency. If you're committed to the cohesive vision, you then need to be consistent across administrations and across generations, right? And stick towards the cohesive goal, right? And I think that way you will be able to see continuity and uh, some actual change in society. So I actually spoke with Bello El Rafai earlier today, and I was talking to him kind of about how there are challenges for youth representatives, you know, or youth House of Rep members because there's a lack of you guys, and and you're sort of faced with the challenge of uh, more of your senior members, um, sort of like bringing, you know, on innovation, and there's sort of a clash with the old school versus new school. What are your hopes, you know, if you do get, you know, in this position, what are your hopes in sort of creating that cohesion with some of the older members, you know, some of your senior members of um, either the House of Reps or even people in government? How do you plan to work with people that are more old school? Right. So uh, essentially, what... Uh what we're discussing is intergenerational solidarity, right? And uh, how to achieve that for me would be, of course, by bringing ideas, right? And uh, by supporting bills and motions that are in the interest of all, right? Particularly uh, not one specific group, right? So if you're able to, uh, to sell your ideas, right? And ultimately what those ideas bring are benefits to constituents, right? I think that will go a long way in uh, improving intergenerational solidarity, right? So everyone has to add value, right? So what we're going to try and do as you is create opportunities to display that value, right? And, uh, and try and carry the, uh, the older members along. Right, because really, what is it all about? It's all about energy from us, the youth, and the wisdom of our elders. Right? You can't. We can't. We can't go off thinking what has come before is useless to us. Absolutely not. We need guidance in order to be able to effectively use this youth energy. Right, and that guidance comes from those who are experienced, who have acted uh, with the utmost character and integrity. And that is, uh, those are the sorts of people we'll, we'll do our best to work with. So which politicians do you look up to um, and who do you aspire to be like, whether it's here in Nigeria or someone from the past or, or even internationally? Okay, so uh, I'll say this. I see qualities in many leaders and... Uh, I take from them little bits of qualities that I feel are relevant to myself. So to say that I have one individual mentor would be wrong, right? But outside politics, outside of politics, I think my mom is one of my biggest mentors, right? She's the matriarch of our family and uh, she's been able to raise all five of us to be industrious, and uh, to, uh, to be committed, to be passionate about whatever it is we're doing. I mean, I have uh, four brothers before me. I would actually say they're my mentors. There you go. Uh, I mean, each of them doing different things with their lives. Uh, the eldest and the third are into oil and gas. The second is into housing, uh, renewable energy. And we actually worked together before my, uh, my uh, quest into uh, politics. And uh, Kabir, who, who is my immediate older brother, who does uh, the logistics and the uh, supply chain uh, management. So actually, they are the ones uh, I would say are my mentors. They are the people that I'm, I, I look up to and uh, 
I want to, uh, at least if I don't get to where they are, at least I get close, you know what I mean, in my own, in my own field of choice, which is now uh, politics. So when it comes like, I guess internationally, or when we look at like America, when it comes to House of Rep members, I don't think anyone would say, would not mention AOC and her style of reaching out to the youth, uh, being vocal on social media, or as a way to connect to a mass you know, audience and represent them. Do you see yourself using social media as a tool to communicate and connect with your uh, constituents? Certainly, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm currently utilizing social media. However, a large proportion of my constituents are not on social media. And thus, we use local media to uh, communicate. And that has been uh, an, interesting, uh, an interesting experience. And uh, I'm still learning a lot. And I'm sure there's still a lot to learn. Uh, yes, but we are utilizing social media as best we can. But uh, for this particular venture, I think uh, social media is not the go-to place to uh, reach out to our constituents. So I guess I'll ask you this, because um, when, when you look at traditional media and when you look at the lack of technology, there's cre it creates more barriers, right? More, you know, communication like, or technology has allowed us to access more people faster than ever before so a lot of nigeria you know they're not online right or they're not specifically on social media but they are on whatsapp though so I, I guess my question to you is how do you hope to connect without social media like how if, like to, to connect effectively you know using more old school methods how do you hope to connect with your constituents yeah, I mean, <clears throat> things like local radio, town criers. Um, I mean, in a lot of these places, there's no electricity to even charge phones. So uh, we need to be realistic about, uh, about where we are whilst planning where we would like to be, right? So uh, yes, social media is important. Uh, it's extremely important in uh, societies, especially that have the development and have uh, people have access to, uh, to social media. However, uh, our realities are not yet there. So we have to still utilize these local networks. And yes, the reach is, uh, the reach is, uh, is pretty phenomenal. And uh, you'd be surprised as to how radio programs are listened to on a daily basis and the numbers that uh, these radio programs uh, have locally. Mm -hmm. And so what are some of the, you know, policies that you hope to put in place to um, target some of those challenges around electrifying, uh, you know, your constituents and as well as getting them on the grid? Right. So uh, actually, it's funny you mentioned on the grid because uh, the work I was doing prior to this uh, prior to this journey into politics was uh, rural electrification. And uh, actually we focus more on off-grid solutions that are affordable, you know what I mean? To, uh, to people in rural communities. So you pay as little as 1,500, some systems, 2,000 Naira, and an agent will come out and install these systems in your house. And every month uh, you get a reminder, you make a payment and kind of like DSTV, your, uh, your system is, loaded up and uh, it's back on, on online. So you can continue to charge your phones, use the light bulbs, use the fan, et cetera, depending on, on what uh, solar home system you choose to, uh, to uh, order for. So essentially, um, I mean, with this background, I mean, like even mini grids are another thing that are uh, coming online. And these are things that uh, we've, we have experience using and we have experience with companies that have deployed numerous solar home systems across Nigeria. So, uh, I mean, I mean, what we're, what we're essentially going to do is facilitate policies, policies to encourage the reach our people and uh, provide uh, uh, electrification, especially in hard to reach communities. 
Okay. And uh, I guess I'll finish off by asking, how would you describe your style as a, you know, as, as a House of Rep member or as a politician? What would you describe your style? What are some of the things that are your priorities? Um, yeah, tell me more. Um, I think, uh, I think essentially this, the, the style I'm utilizing is uh, one of someone that is ready to learn, right? Like you're going into an arena where uh, a lot of your ideas might not actually be um, apl applicable, right? So what you have to do is learn how the system operates, right? And then see how you can key into that system. So uh, with all sense of humility, I think uh, is how I'm approaching the, the experience because look, you, you have to know your shortcomings, right? Like, uh, and you have to be able to identify the fact that like you're going into an environment with 362, 361 other people, right? And uh, you're going to have to work with people right, in order to make things happen. So uh, there's a lot of ideas you're going to have to rethink and rejig in order to, uh, to uh, be able to move together, right? Uh, I think that's, uh, that's crucial. And do you feel there's the entrepreneurship, whether it is watching your brothers, your mother, and yourself, do you think that has, you know, given you the grit and the skills necessary to move in, uh, into this new position? Um, actually, I think more of my personal experiences, uh, more of my uh, ability to communicate with, the, with people in the most rural communities, uh, to understand their plights, to, uh, to engage, you know what I mean, at the uh, most micro levels. I think that has really uh, humbled me and uh, given me the opportunity to... Uh, discuss at length with people who I otherwise would not know, right? And uh, I think this goes out to all youth as well. Uh, like I said initially, the youth, we, the youth are the face of society, right? We, the youth, are the face of the nation's future. The best of the youth are humble and kind. The best of the youth know that in order to attain any form of development or any significant form of societal development, you will definitely need to infuse the wisdom of our elders with our energy, right? Uh, for me, these are the things that are important. If we want to build a, a society uh, where, where development can actually be uh, sustainable, you know, and inspire others to do the same. Mm. Is there any other thing that, that you wanted to say or mention before we close off? Uh, no, I, I think uh, my last message would just be uh, to any youth that are listening. Uh, it is on us uh, to uh, get involved and participate in politics uh, because it's easy to sit down and complain, uh, especially people like yourself and myself who have the privilege of you know, studying abroad and understanding the dynamics of what is actually taking place to actually bring ourselves into the fold of politics uh, in whatever way we can, be it at the local level, the state level, or at the national level, and uh, join these conversations. Of course, I'll encourage everyone to vote and collect their PVC. However, beyond the vote, how are we getting involved in civic engagement, getting involved with any focus or pressure groups? You know, uh, I think these things are extremely important. And I think uh, for you to get involved with that would definitely bring uh, a lot of change to uh, our societies from the local level, right through the state level to the national level. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for having me. We'll wrap it up. All right. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above, and stay tuned. New episodes every Tuesdays and Thursdays here on Stream OVG. You can catch us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and of course, on all podcasting platforms. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.